Welcome back to McMaster University course Computer Science 1JC3 Introduction to Computational Thinking. We are going to continue discussing the topic of numbers. We're going to start by looking at the difference between decimal numerals and binary numerals. A decimal numeral is a numeral built up according to the Hindu Arabic system using 10 digits and these are the 10 right here. Um, so we have these 10 digits. They're right here. And in base 2, we build up numerals in the same way, but we only use two digits. So for base 10, we use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and there's 10 of them. And for base 2, we use 0, 1, there's just two of them. The key thing is, for base 2, we have two digits. For base 10, we have 10 digits. And then if we're going to write a number in base 10, like this number, we understand it, according to the Hindu Arabic system, by starting at the right and looking at each digit going from right to left. So the first one is going to be 9 times 1. Then we're going to have 0 times 10, 4 times 100, 6 times 1,000, 8 times 10,000. But we can think of this as 9 times 10 to the 0, 0 times 10 to the 1, 4 times 10 to the 2, 6 times 10 to the 3, and 8 times 10 to the 4. And we add that up, and that gives us 86,409. Now, if we're going to do things in base 2, if we're going to look at this number in base 2, it works exactly the same way. We start here. We're going to have 1 times 1. Then we're going to have 0 times 2. Then we're going to have 1 times 4. 1 times 8. 0 times 16. 1 times 32. 0 times 64. 1 times 28. And that all adds up to 173. And what we're really doing is 1 times 2 to the 0, 0 times 2 to the 1, 1 times 2 to the 2, and so forth. Now, if we think about the difference between these two, there's no difference at all, except here we use base 10, and here we use base 2. That is the only difference. So... What we're going to do is give you a little question. What is the binary number 1011 equal to in decimal? So I'll give you a moment to think about that. OK, well, let's think about it. Let's work it out, actually. This is our number in base 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the right. I'm going to look at this. And this will be 1 times 2 to the 0, which equals 1. And then this is going to be 1 times 2 to the 1, which equals 2. And this is 0 times 2 to the 2, which equals 0. And then this is 1 times 2 to the 3, which equals 8. And we add those up, we get 11. That's the answer. OK, so let's think about the representation of numbers in different bases. And this is a representation that uh, corresponds to the Hindu Arabic numeral system. The Hindu Arabic numeral system was developed for base 10, but it can be used for any base whatsoever. And the base, this is our base, and the only place the base comes in is here. Um, what we have here, if, you, if you're wondering what this is, let me, if you're wondering what this summation means, I'll just write down an example here. If we have a summation from, uh, 
let's say k equals m to n of, let's say, if some expression k. That equals that expression starting at m. and so forth, going up until we get to the expression for n. So this, this is uh, notation for a way of doing summation. Now, it's not actually, this, what I wrote there here is if m is less than or equal to n. If m is greater than n, the answer is zero. So there's two answers. This one and this one. Okay, so um, let me erase some of this stuff. So there's different bases that have been used in history. I've mentioned the most popular ones, uh, the most popular ones here which are base 10. We use that every day. Sometimes you see base 12. We even have a number for 12, a dozen. We even have a number for 12 to the second power, a gross. And two historically important bases are 20. The Mayans used base 20. And base 60, the Babylonians used base 60. And base 60 we still find today in things like 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 360 degrees in a circle. Now in computing, the bases we're going to use are 2, 10, and 16. We use 2 because everything in a computer is organized as 2. We use 10 because that's what people use in everyday life. We use 16 because 16 is a compact way of writing base 2. So base 16, we're going to need 16 digits we're going to use the 10 normal Arabic numbers and we're going to use the six uh, alphabetic characters. Actually, I should have said here, not numbers, numerals. Okay, so uh, let's move on. This is a table that shows how we can represent the first 16 numbers in binary, decimal, and hexadecimal. And notice that in decimal, we can represent most of them, the first 10, with one digit. With uh, the, the next six, 10 through 15, we need two digits. But with hexadecimal, we can represent all of them with just one digit and we can represent any binary number using four digits with exactly one hexa digit in hexadecimal. That's the purpose of hexadecimal. It allows us to represent uh, binary numbers in a compact form. Okay, so let's take an example. Um, I'll let you do this. What is the binary number 11101011 equal to in hexadecimal? Um, so, I'll give you a moment. Okay, now that you're back, how do we do this? Well, let's write down the number. And let's start at the right and count four over and, and separate. Four over and separate. Maybe it would have been clear if I didn't do it. Use the same color. So I'm going to separate these like this. Okay, so, so what I want to do is convert this into hexadecimal. Well, it's easy. All I have to do is go back up here and use my table. But let's say I don't have my table. How do I do it? Well, it's simple. I start from the right, I move to the left. So I have 1, and then I have 2, and then I have 0, that corresponds to this, and then I have 8. And 
that's 11 in base 10, which equals B in base 16. Looks like this should be the right answer. Let's do this one now. This should be 0 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. We add those together, um, and we get um, 14. 14 in base 10, which equals E in base 16. That's, that means this is the correct answer. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do today is we're going to talk a bit about representing number systems. Now, all the number systems I mentioned are infinite. The natural numbers, integers, uh, rationals, reals, and complex number systems, they're all infinite. So how do we represent an infinite number system on a computer that has only a finite amount of memory? This is a problem that we need to solve. And there's different ways of solving it. The first solution is to represent each number using a fixed number of bits. Usually the number of bits will be a power of 2, like 16, 32, 64. And we organize our whole computer based on this number of bits. So that's when people talk about a 64-bit computer. It's a 64-bit computer that's been organized to manipulate 64 bits at a time. Which means when we're talking about uh, numbers, it's organized to manipulate numbers that are 64 bits. Now, if we do things this way, we can represent numbers and store them and compute with them very efficiently. It's great for this, but the problem is we can only represent at most two to, let's say it's n bits, we have only two to the n bits in bit numbers. That's only finally many numbers, that are as infinite many numbers, so this is a big disadvantage. We can only represent a small little portion of possible numbers. So that's the first solution. It's very efficient. It's good as long as we can get by using just a very small portion of the numbers. The solution, the second solution is we represent things using an unbounded number of bits. We use as many bits as we need to represent the number. Now the advantage of this is we can represent every number even numbers that cannot be stored on our computer. We can represent any number with this scheme. The problem is it's very inefficient in the use of space. For instance, if I have 10 to the thousand, or uh, no, let, let me, let's wait, I don't want 10. You want to think in base two. Let's say I had 2 to the 1,000. So I can represent this with 1,000 bits. And the first uh, bit will be 1, and then I'm going to have a bunch of zeros, 1,000 of them. That's a lot of bits to represent that number. But really, I could represent it in a different way and say the first is 1 and all the others are zeros. So, so 2 to the 1,000 takes a 1,000 bits to represent. So you can see that this kind of representation may not, may not be efficient. And when we do computations, if we did it in this naive way, computations would be much, much slower for solution 2 than solution 1. Okay, we're going to stop here and... We'll continue next time with machine.